Well, one of SpaceX's goals is to reduce space transportation costs and eventually enable the colonization of Mars. A lot of people are wondering, uh, is the stuff of sci-fi actually within our grasp? Here with us to discuss that is renowned futurist Michio Kaku, author of the best-selling book, The Future of Humanity, just hit the New York Times bestseller. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you for stopping by. Uh, we do want to start by this. I mean, the, you know, global warming is real. Climate change is real. Uh, depletion of our resources is real is a time we started getting serious thinking about establishing civilization, human civilization elsewhere in outer space. Well, you know, the dinosaurs did not have a space program. That's why they're not here today oh, to talk did. about it, right? Okay, we right. do have a space program. Not that we're going to evacuate the Earth, but we should have an insurance policy. We should have settlements elsewhere in case something bad does happen to the Earth. Asteroid impacts, supervolcanoes, self-inflicted problems like global warming, you name it. So we need Plan B. We need a backup policy. All right. That sounds reasonable. But let's talk about that. The more realistic of the options, colonization of Mars, even if we could get there, there's still so many challenges, right, from not having an atmosphere, uh, no gravity, wreaking havoc on our bones. Even if we could get there, how do we terraform that environment into one that's hospitable for us? Well, first of all, NASA used to be criticized as the agency to nowhere. Now, after a 50-year gap, we're going back to the moon. Next year, we're going to send the SLS booster rocket around the moon, and we could have a traffic jam around the moon because Elon Musk has his uh, Falcon Heavy. We have two booster rockets capable of going to the moon, and then after that, we're going to go on to Mars. And remember, Mars does have gravity. It's about 30% that of the Earth. Atmosphere about 1% that of the Earth's atmosphere. That radiation for us, that's, that's challenging. Right. So we're going to have to, for example, have a base that protects us against radiation. We're going to have to create bioengineered crops that can grow in that harsh environment to create agriculture on that planet. I saw the Ma Martian. It's possible. Potatoes. <laughs> that's right. And also, you know that movie, The Martian, cost $100 million? Uh -huh. The Indians sent a probe to Mars for $70 million. Ah, so you realize the Hollywood movies about Mars cost yep. more mm -hmm. than actually going to Mars. Right. And so they should give an Oscar for the best supporting spacecraft. Well, technology is certainly making it more plausible. But how Cheaper we... and more plausible, yes, right. Yes, but what about overcoming the time and distance part? Let's say we are thinking beyond the solar system, uh, the closest star, Alpha Centauri, 100,000 years more than that to get there. How could that be overcome? Well, now we're talking about the next century. Okay. But we physicists have already begun to map out that. NASA has what is called the 100-year Starship program, where it's looked at fusion rockets and antimatter rockets, technology that we don't have today, but in a hundred years' time, there's nothing in the laws of physics preventing us from having these very advanced rockets that can take us to the stars. Okay, I'm a big fan of John Scalzi, a sci-fi author. I just read his Old Man's War, in which geriatrics, or aging population, can transplant their consciousness into a whole new engineered body. Now, is that something you think is plausible, and could we achieve immortality that way? Well, digital immortality is something that is very doable. In the future, when you go to the library, instead of taking a book out about Winston Churchill, you will talk to Winston Churchill. You'll see a holographic image with all his memories, his, mo his videos, his writings, his speeches. And one day we could be digitized too. So that our great, 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 great grandchildren will go to the library to talk to their great, 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 great illustrious uh, grandmother because we have been digitized. And so it's possible that we could be put into an avatar, a mechanical avatar with the power of a Superman that can breathe on different planets, survive in weightlessness, and we could explore the universe with these immortal avatars. Wow. And once we achieve that, maybe even before that, it's time to start debating the ethics of trying to achieve those things and which ones we want to choose. We are kind of out of time. That's another interview for your That's another trip. selling book. <laughs> I do want to let folks know that people can get you to sign their books if they go to uh, Kepler's tonight at 7.30, right, at the San Mateo Performing Arts That's Center right. in San Mateo. You will be speaking. That's at 7.30. Uh, that tonight. is tonight, right?